Welcome to our introduction to the derivative. Um, now, what you're going to find in, in this video is we're going to develop the definition of a derivative. But I want you to know, and we might as well tell you this now, is that the derivative and slopes are pretty much the same thing. Now, the definition of a derivative is much more complicated than just saying a slope. But in the end, the derivative is going to help us find the slope. So I have a graph right here. All right, it is just a nice diagonal line. Uh, what I want to know is basically the slope at, say, that point. Now, notice that it's actually the same slope anywhere on the graph, right? Because this is a straight line, and you know that from algebra that it's going to have this mx plus b, and that this right here, this m, is the slope. All right, but I want to find the slope using the slope formula that you learned in algebra. So let's say I want to know the slope from here to here. All right, so I'm going to call this A and this B. And I want to know the slope of this line. Now, the slope of this line is actually the slope of this whole line. All right, so let me write down the slope. We have <clears throat> M, which is what we used to, for the slope of a line. And that's going to be F of B minus f of a over b minus a. You, know, you might have also learned it as y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, but these two are the same formula. But finding the slope on this line was actually pretty simple because the slope anywhere on this line is going to be the same thing. Notice that it doesn't change anywhere on this graph. All right, so let's take a look at a more complicated graph. If I ask you to find the slope on this graph, notice that the slopes at any point are going to be different. So this is the slope at, say, 1, right? But the slope at 2, you can see that it has a different line, right? So the slope of this is much more steep. All right, now we're kind of flattening out. If I wanted the slope at, say, 3, right, it's a different slope than it was right here. And finally, the slope at 4, slightly different. I mean, it's kind of similar, but these are all going to be different slopes. So the slope changes at any point on this graph. Now, we had no way in algebra to determine the slope exactly at a certain point. But what we can do using algebra is we can estimate the slope. So let's say I want to find the slope at this point. Now, this is the point, uh, what is that, 1, 4. So I want to know the slope here. And you can, you can see it's actually pretty steep, right? Uh, so here's what we would do in algebra. We can find the slope if I have two points. So let's say I have a line connecting this point to, say, that point. Now, forgive me if it's not a perfectly straight line. And there we go. Okay, so I can find the slope of this line. All right, notice that I have two points. I have the point 1, 4, and I have the point over here, which is 4, 1. And so I can find the slope, which is going to be uh, f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. All right, now f of 4 is 1, right? So that's going to be 1 minus, now what's f of 1? All right, that's 4 over 4 minus 1. That's negative 3 over 3, and so that's negative 1. So the slope of this line right here is negative 1. Now, it, it's, it's an okay estimate for the slope of this line, but it's still not good enough. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another line between our original point 1, 4, and let's say this point right here, which is the point 2, 2. So let's go ahead and draw a line connecting these two points. All right. And I want to know the slope of this line. Now, rem remember that the, the line connecting our original point to 4, 1 
that had a slope of negative 1. All right, so let's go ahead and see what our slope of our new line is. All right, so that's going to be f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1. Now f of 2 is 2, and f of 1 is still 4, and then we have 2 minus 1, so that's negative 2. All right, so when that makes sense, because this slope, or the line, the slope of this line was not as steep as this one. So this has, this line has a slope of negative two. So to summarize what we've done so far, again, I'm trying to find the slope of this line right here, or the slope at this point. Now these are actually called secant lines. We'll talk more about those later. But a secant line is just a line connecting two points on a graph. Now notice that uh, as this point got closer, so originally I was at one or four, now it's at two, and the secant line, or the slope of the secant line, is getting, is, it's getting closer to the slope of this line. So let's pick another point pretty close to one. Okay, so the point that I chose, one that was close to one, was 1 1.25. All right, so let's find the slope of this secant line. So that's f of 1.5 minus f of 1 all over 1 point, sorry, 1 1.25 minus f of 1 over 1 1.25 minus 1. Now f of 1.25, that's 3.2, and f of 1 is 4 over 1 1.25 minus 1. And that gets me negative 3.2. So that's the slope of this line. All right, so what are we doing? We're picking values close to 1. And as we get closer and closer to 1, you can see that our secant line is getting closer and closer to my point, or the slope at that point. So I can, I can write the slope. Let's do this. I can write the slope as... Well, this is the point that I'm choosing, right? Over here, x was 4, and now x is 2. Over here, x was the 1.25, so that was x. So I'm going to choose an x value, and it's always going to be minus f of 1 over x minus 1. Now, this formula is the slope of all of those secant lines. If I plug in 4, right, and if I plug in 4 here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this formula up here. Well, if I get a better estimate of this slope, the slope at that point that I want, by picking x values closer and closer to 1, then why don't I do this? I'll say the slope at 1, 4. If I'm getting a better estimate as x gets closer and closer to 1, why don't I take the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus f of 1? all over x minus 1. All right, we know how to find limits, so let's go ahead and finish this problem right now. We have, scroll down here, we have the limit as x approaches 1. Now f of x, I don't think I actually told you what f of x is. It's actually y equals 4 over x. Okay, so that's my f of x. And then f of 1 was 4 all over x minus 1. Now this takes us back to a problem that you know how to do. I want to find the limit. Now if you plug in 1, you're going to get 4 minus 4, that's 0 on top, and then 1 minus 1 on the bottom, that's 0. So we're going to get 0 over 0. So we needed a way to deal with this. And what we did was we multiplied top and bottom by x, because that would get rid of this denominator here. So let's go ahead and finish this up. x approaches 1. Now when you take 4 over x times this x coming in, then you're just going to get 4 minus, and then x onto that 4 gives you 4x over x minus 1 times x. And that's going to equal the limit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out negative 4. 
and that's going to give me x minus 1, all over x minus 1 times x. Now I'll let you check this, um, that that actually is the same as this, as x approaches 1. And notice that the x minus 1s cancel, and we are left with the limit of negative 4 over x. Now what happens when x approaches 1? I'm just going to plug in 1. I get negative 4 over 1. That's negative 4. So my slope actually at this point, right here, the slope is negative 4. Now what we did here is we actually pretty much did the, the derivative. Now these were all um, slopes of secant lines, but then when we got down here, we actually, this is our derivative. 